What do you think will happen when you remove tonsils? Yes, you can fix bad breath, you can still fix tonsillitis, and also sleep apnea, plus some other things. But this is not the whole picture. We have other things that tonsils usually do, and we have also alternative ways of doing the same thing. And in this video, we are going to fix tonsillitis, remove that bad breath that usually comes from tonsil stones, and also sleep apnea. Also, what you're going to miss out once you remove them, and the reason I wouldn't recommend this to a kid or someone who is young. And you can see there's some whitish things. I don't know how to remove them. When we mention tonsils, I'm not sure whether most of you know exactly what they do in the body and uh, let's start from that point because from there that's when you can able to tell exactly what you're going to lose and uh, the benefits you're going to get as a result of removing them. Now we have three types. I'm sure when we mention tonsils you only think about these ones. Those are palatine and uh, those are just only one type. We have another that we call adenoids, pharyngeal, usually at the back of the nose there at the junction and uh, we also have another one. When you pull your tongue out, you might see some bumps at the back there. The bumps. That's what we call lingual tonsils. And finally, the reason we are here, palatine or palatine tonsils. It will depend with the anatomy lecturer. They are very notorious when it comes to getting tonsillitis and tonsil stones. Why are we talking about this? Because there is a very important function they play. They have special cells that we call microfold cells. They are on the surface of all the tonsils. What they do is antigen presentation. Now, Ignore that. Antigen presentation is they look at something, they see, hey, this is an antigen or this something that can actually cause an infection. It's an antigen from a pathogen. So it gets the message to now the core, what we call the germinal center of the tonsil. And this is where you have the B and the T cells. And now they're going to take over this message and now arm themselves. They'll go in the armory and take whatever they need to kill whatever they've seen. This is an oversimplification. B cells will do several more things but you're going to focus on two. The first one is production of antibodies that will come and fight off whatever pathogen they saw. Second, they're going to form memory B cells so that in the future should the same thing happen to appear on a short notice they will be able to produce antibodies so it will be very efficient next time they see that. So it contribute to the immunity. By now, I'm sure you've learned two things. Yeah? The first one is the placement, the location of the tonsils, very strategic. In case you breathe in a pathogen or maybe you eat a pathogen through food, they can easily be able to detect that. And now that's where the second thing you've learned. They play a major role when it comes to your immune system. I'm sure by now you have a clue where we are headed. But before you get there, how do you get tonsil stones? Why are they smelly? And why do they give you bad smell? And also we are going to see ways you can be able to fix this situation. Now, tonsil stones. Unfortunately, we have few people on the tonsils that we've mentioned, those on the sides there, they have grooves and pockets. And guess one thing that usually keep you alive? Food goes through the mouth most of the time unless you are sick. So when you're eating, some of the food debris, especially carbohydrates, will get into those grooves and those pockets. Also in the mouth, there is something else which is good and can also be bad. The bacteria. You have so many strains, you have so many species in the mouth and uh, yeah, it's normal for them to be there. But they will take advantage of the food that you have inside the pocket. They are going to break down that. And because this is a very good ground for them to stay because food is there, so the nutrition is just there. So when you go and find a place where you can easily be able to get food, Part of the thing that you can do is just build a house there, establish a very good ground for you to live in, and this is what they do. They create or they calcify the food debris to create a calcium, a stone. That will be hard. It's a biofilm. They are inside there, and this is to protect them from uh, you dislodging them and also prevent you from uh, the saliva that will have antibodies. Or yeah, they are safe there. They stay there. So it's the intention of the bacteria to create that stone and uh, stay inside that. The reason you usually get bad breath is because they are also still feeding. They are breaking down carbohydrates and whatever else is in the mouth and especially the sulfur containing food. So they break down that, the gas that they are going to yeah, give out, it's going to be very nasty. I know. And before you continue, you can tell us what you usually use as a home remedy to fight bad breath. One of the things I usually do, we have cloths. I don't have tonsil stones, so mine is not chronic. can be maybe I forgot to brush, you know, sometimes you can have long shifts. <laughs> I know. Or sometimes you really brush using salt, or can just gag salty water. All cloves. You don't have to chew, because it's quite uh, nasty when you chew. You can just keep it in the mouth, let it stay. 
just keep your mouth busy just some few minutes and then yeah it works something that you might also want to know is sulfur containing foods like garlic can give you bad breath because you have a lot of sulfur in it that will give you bad breath because bacteria will break down that and sulfur will get out i'm sure you've seen or even smelled rotten eggs yes tonsillectomy will fix both bad breath and also tonsillitis but first of all let's get to know other ways you can go to yeah, remove the stones like the one that we saw in that video now one thing you have to know is you can easily remove them using so many things you have so many tools in the house you can actually use your finger you wash it you remove it but you'll have to know that they will keep recurring because you have the grooves and the pocket so they'll keep coming back the best you can do is to keep removing them and know how to remove them because now visiting a dentist every now and then for removal of the same is not tenable and you can see there's some whitish things i don't know how to remove them and i believe that the ones who are make uh, that, that are making me uh, have a bad breath in the morning from this video the one that we actually saw you can easily see them meaning that you can easily remove them wash your finger remove them i know you might get gag reflux and this is where you're going to the second thing you can cough them out yeah cough first are cough what you're doing is you are contracting and relaxing the muscles so chances are high that you might eject them the stones that is if they can be able to come out easily sometimes they are notorious you can use a wooden tongue depressor or do you see the spoon we have two sides we have the side that usually hold on and you have the one the side that usually scoop the food turn it the other way around you see the handle use that wash it fast and then you can use that to scoop them out now there's several other things that you can still do yeah you can gag warm water that is salty but this is after you remove them another thing that you can do is taking antibacterial mouthwash but that i highly discourage that that will have to be given to you by your dentist after they see the benefits because i don't believe in giving someone antibiotics just for the sake of doing it you will kill good bacteria bad bacteria all in the same baskets also contributing to you know amr antimicrobial resistance so chew cloves use salt to gag those are the ones that I usually use people can suggest more in the comment region but be skeptical about what people might suggest some can even suggest acid i fear you people <laughs> we have although it's usually depend with the level of uh, severity of your condition now let's go a notch higher you go to a hospital what will happen the first thing might be your doctor might just look at them and give you antibiotics and you'll go and uh, they'll be fixed because what you're doing is you're killing bacteria that is responsible for formation of uh, the tonsil stones and uh, chances are you're also going to have tonsillitis tonsillitis is inflammation of the tonsils and this usually happen due to you have bacteria you have fungi rare but you can also have viruses and this is quite common when you're taking antibiotics and you're never getting well so your doctor might give you antiviral drugs for that can be an injection can be tablets it will depend with what they find suitable for you but most of the time it's going to be bacteria so they might end up giving you antibiotics and by the way there is a reason that you might not want to have them removed from kids until they grow up there is a reason for that and uh, we are going to look at it in a few seconds but let's go to tonsillectomy this is the removal of the tonsils yeah now we have several indications your doctor might look at you and they're like hey we need to remove that and we have several things that may warrant you to have them removed the first one is they keep coming back each and every time now the danger with them being there infected each and every time is you might risk getting something that we call septicemia and bacteremia bacteremia is having bacteria in the blood quite dangerous we also have uh, septicemia which is having bacteria and the toxins that usually come from the bacteria inside the blood still dangerous and this can even affect your heart so it's something that your doctor might consider if you get them each and every time the second thing might be you usually get sleep apnea this is you're not even able to breathe well you snort every time you get sleep by now you understand what sleep apnea is if not then maybe you can tell me in the comment section you can make a video dedicated for that but now you know sleep apnea usually trouble even sleeping now if you usually get that they might want to remove them so that they, 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 they make the airway a little bit yeah wider and especially if they're infected they are swollen uh, this is the third one is uh, in case you have a tumor there if you have a tumor there to reduce the risk it's better to have them removed but then you'd have to know that removal of tonsils most of the time will turn out okay you just live your life completely normal as if nothing is going on 
remember you have two more which are left you have adenoids and you also have the lingual tonsils they are there the only ones that were removed are the ones on the sides palatine palatine maybe you can tell me how you pronounce them maybe how you are taught this is not biology this is medicine you can tell me if you went through anatomy you can just tell me in the comment region that will depend on the lecturer so when you have just only one removed the only thing that's happening is you are reducing the efficiency of the system but the system is still functional so most of the time it will not even yeah make any difference the main reason why i wouldn't want to have them removed from a baby or from a kid is because now you see they're still young they're still exploring the immune system is still not at the prime if someone who is like me who is approaching 50 years of age is a i have come across so many pathogens so i have memory remember you said inside the germinal cells we have b cells that might also form memory b cells that will be ready in case there will be an infection that will be similar to what they were exposed to earlier on so i have so many of them compared to someone who is young so having when removed doesn't inconvenience me as much compared to that baby or that kid that has not come across as many of those pathogens as possible so i'm sure you got you have the reason now so unless it's quite necessary don't have them removed let them struggle with them until they get to yeah they get over them so like i said chances will be after their removal nothing will happen you not even notice anything but we still have some dangers you see this is surgery surgery usually come with them um, okay some minor surgery but usually come with uh, their own dangers can be that never resolved depending on how they were removed if you still have grooves left there and it means that you'll still be packing food there and bacteria will take advantage of that because you'll never clear bacteria in your mouth and actually clearing will be a crime you cannot be able to live without bacteria in any part of your body okay not any part of the body in most part of the body because we have places where even a single bacteria can be lethal like in your brains also put in mind that you might lose a sense of taste and a sense of smell just putting it out there it usually happens to very few people out of those usually get them removed and selectomy but uh, it's something for you to know that you might either completely lose a sense of smell and a sense of taste or they become weird Based on the information that I've given you, you can weigh the risks and the benefits you're getting from removing them. And then from there, you can be able to tell, actually, I have people in the audience who can tell us what was the experience for those who had the ears removed if you had tonsillectomy. Just tell us the experience that you had. And also for the other group, you can tell us some of the quick remedies you usually get when you get tonsillitis. I have one. Let me give you just a quick one. I think you should make a video of how usually this is a concussion. Tea masala, cloves, the one that I'm chewing. I have lemon. This is a concussion. And then there is a way you usually take it. And uh, by morning, they are not there. They clear. I think we should make a video about that. Just tell me if you want me to make that video. Or just make a... Is it a montage? I actually have two cameras so we can have several angles. <laughs> anyway, if you want me to make that video, you can tell me. And also, if you have a trick in your bag that usually helps you in, in keeping the stones out of your mouth, you can tell us. So in conclusion, for our ladies here, now weigh the benefits and the risks that you're getting. But this, you'll have to be guided by your doctor. In my opinion, having them removed will fix so many things. But I'm also aware of the risks that you might be exposing yourself to. So make a conscious decision out of the information that we're going to give you and the information we're going to give you in the comment region. See you in the next video.